Hello, Clinic Review family. Welcome back for our second pharmacology video. Remember that the 50 meds that you need to know for NCLEX are in the description of this video, but each video only has five meds that we're covering um, using questions, NCLEX style questions. So let's go ahead and get started. These are questions six through 10. Remember how to share this. There we go. Okay. Your patient is receiving nitroglycerin continuous IV for a diagnosis of unstable angina. They begin to complain of headache eight out of 10. What is your best response? So nitroglycerin is the drug. Call a rapid response. Stop the nitroglycerin. Call the healthcare provider or administer prescribed acetaminophen. So here's the thing. They are having either a side effect or an adverse effect of nitroglycerin, because now they have a headache. We started the nitro and now they have a headache. So the question is, is headache a side effect of nitroglycerin or is it an adverse effect? Because side effects, we treat. Side effects, we don't stop the med. Side effects, we don't call the doctor. Adverse effects, we do stop the med, we do call the doctor. So the question is headache a side effect or an adverse effect? And the answer is it is a side effect. It's the most common side effect of nitroglycerin. So we're going to treat it, which means we're going to administer the prescribed acetaminophen. So we're definitely not going to call the healthcare provider because we don't call the doctor for side effects. We treat them. We don't stop the med for side effects. We treat them. We certainly don't call a rapid response. I, I don't know that I'd even call a rapid response for an adverse effect unless it, like they stop breathing or something like that. That's a little extreme. Okay, next question. Which medication is a standard of care for patients with bipolar disorder? Okay, this is just, you just got to know this one. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, Resedronate is uh, actually not a psych med. So we could crawl, cross that one off. But Haldol is a psych med. Venlafaxine is a psych med. Lithium is a psych med. So the question is, what do they each do? So Haldol is for psychosis. Then lefaxine is an antidepressant. So the standard of care treatment medication for bipolar disorder is lithium. And lithium is actually a, an electrolyte. Um, and so in, it, that kind of makes sense. Lithium, potassium, sodium, right? So if you think lithium is an electrolyte, then you could think what are common side effects of changes with electrolytes. So we're going to get to that, but think about that. Electrolyte changes, potassium changes, sodium changes, lithium changes. Um, what are some common side effects? Because as the lithium level goes up in the body, that's an electrolyte, right? So it goes up. So you're going to have like common side effects of of, of an electrolyte going up. What we don't want it to happen is it to go up so high that it becomes toxic, right? but lithium is the standard of care for patients with bipolar disorder. You're preparing to discharge a patient who has a new prescription for spironolactone. Which of the following statements indicates further teaching is required? I will start to eat a banana every day to replace the potassium I'm losing. I will notify my doctor if I notice increased swelling in my ankles. I will take this medication in the morning. I expect to go to the bathroom more frequently. All right. What requires further teaching. Now that's a key word. Further teaching means you're looking for the false statement. And we just talked about classes of drugs uh, on the previous video, farm number one. So if you haven't watched it yet, go back and watch farm number one. And we know that spironolactone is what class of drug? We know it is a potassium sparing diuretic. It's a potassium sparing diuretic. That's why I went through those drugs initially in farm one, because it's really important to know the class. So if it's potassium sparing, that means they're retaining potassium. Okay. They're getting rid of water, but they're retaining potassium. So if you're retaining potassium, let's make these true false statements, which requires further teaching. So I'm looking for the false statement. I will start to eat a banana every day to replace the potassium I'm losing. Well, that's false because you're not losing potassium. I will notify my doctor if I increase, notice increased swelling of my ankles. Well, sure, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, cool. I will take this med in the morning. Well, it's a diuretic. So yeah, cool. I expect to go to the bathroom more frequently. Definitely true. I mean, of course. So the only one that's false is they don't need to eat a, a banana every day to replace the potassium they're losing because they're not losing potassium, y'all. You're preparing to administer the prescribed warfarin at 1700. Which of the following labs would require you to question whether you should administer 
this medication. So you're going to question it. We're not clarifying anything. We're questioning. We're like, okay, this means I maybe don't want to give this medication. I'm getting ready to administer warfarin. So sodium, does sodium have anything to do with warfarin? Not that I know of hemoglobin. Well, the hemoglobin, well, first of all, the sodium is normal anyway. The hemoglobin is normal. So I'm no potassium is normal. INR is 4.5. What's INR supposed to be? It's supposed to be between two and three. So if my INR, if the INR is that high, then I'm not sure I want to give the warfarin. So make sure that you know these values. These are values you have to know. You have to know normal sodium. Normal sodium is 135 to 145. Hemoglobin is uh, like 12, over 12. So 12 to 15, maybe 12 to 16. Potassium is 3.5 to 5 or 3.5 to 5.3, depending on what book you're looking at. And INR is between two and three. So if you don't know those lab values, you need to know them. We're just doing farm right now, but you got to know lab values too, y'all. Okay, last question for today. A 75-year-old female comes to the ED with the following symptoms. Headache, tremors, urinary retention, and hyporeflexia. She reports a history of schizophrenia, hypertension, and GERD. She takes the following medications, haloperidol, lisinopril, and pantoprazole. What should you do first? All right. Now, normally when I got a question like this, I would go through all of the symptoms and I would go, well, which one is physiological? And I would address that one first. We'll, we'll have other questions like that. Um, there's a whole uh, video on prioritization. Uh, really recommend you watch the prioritization videos, y'all, if you haven't watched them yet. Uh, really recommend it. So, um, but in this case here, I'm teaching you a specific thing. And here's what I want you to remember. Haldol. For older adults who take Haldol, they are at risk for NMS. They are at risk for neuroleptic malignant syndrome. The words don't indicate at all what it means. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a very high body temperature. So in a question like this, where they tell me I have an older adult with these vague symptoms, they're very vague, headache, tremors, urinary retention, hyperreflexia. I, what is all that? I don't know. But she's taking Haldol and I know she's at risk for NMS, neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Just remember NMS. Do you know what I have to do? I got to check her temperature. I have to y'all. Okay. I have to check her temperature. That's the first thing I have to do. So when you get a question on NCLEX, it's asking about Haldol. Look to see if it's older an older adult. And if they have the option to check their temperature, you do it. Haldol is an antipsychotic medication. For older adults, they need to take half the dose so that they don't develop NMS. So that's a key thing to remember about Haldol. Okay, so that is our farm number two video. Watch for more to come out. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Remember to look at, at clinicreviews.com to see when our reviews, NCLEX reviews are scheduled. So I hope you have a great rest of your day.